You know, there's a lot of naysaying going around right now that EV sales are slowing down, but that's just not what the data shows. Canada, this morning, we saw fresh data come out. Our EV sales continue to rise and our rate of sales growth continues to rise. Uh, the EU, we're seeing upwards of 20% EV sales now in terms of new car sales. China might be on track for 30 to 40% this year. There, we're, we're headed in one direction and I, I agree that Canada and Ontario are attracting the investments that are needed to be um, exporting and, and producing the vehicles that are, are surely the future. Dennis, you want in on that? Yeah, I think one of the things we have to think about is, you know, if it's if it's slowed down at all, it's partly because we haven't got the infrastructure. You know, we haven't got the charging infrastructure outside of some of the major cities. I just came back from Europe and the UK. You know, there's charging everywhere. You know, almost every you know, every taxi or or uh, Uber I got into in London is electric. <coughs> Many of them from China. There is, you know, there, there is going to be a bit of a lag as we get used to this, as people get used to the idea that we need to have more charging infrastructure. Ontario is in a great position because we have a, a, a mostly clean grid. Um, so I think that, that that chart may not be a straight scale. There may be a couple, a couple little, uh, you know, flat spots, but I think ultimately it, that's the direction we're going in. Maybe not for every kind of vehicle. You know, for large trucks, we'll probably have to look at things like hydrogen because of the practicality. But for, you know, for... Passenger vehicles, I think it's going in that direction. Josipa? Uh, I'll just say battery electric plants serve the hydrogen market too, because all uh, platforms have batteries. But I, again, I'm not going to be negative, <clears throat> Nelly, but I do want us to like pull the wool from our eyes. Uh, the reality is exactly as you said, Minister, the mandates are driving this. This is not General Motors woke up and said, let's build electric cars because everybody wants them. So what do you mean in the fact, mandates are driving? The mandates from California, from the United States, in terms of CAFE standards, the corporate average fuel economy standards, the CARB standards. They just so relaxed those CAFE standards They did, but still, even still, uh, Steve, the only way by the laws of physics to meet those standards in California and the U.S., which, by the way, we have mimicked in Canada at the federal mm -hmm. level, the only way by the laws of physics is power trains that are predominantly plug-in hybrid or fully battery electric or hydrogen. So it is mandates. Now, the reason why that's okay is as voters and consumers, maybe as consumers we wake up, we don't want to buy these cars, they're expensive. But as voters, we keep voting in governments that are passing climate action. So in some way we're saying as voters, consumers, we do want these cars. Individually as households, it's tough, but our governments are passing the mandate. To your question though, Steve, if any of those politics falter, these sales start to drop off in individual households. That means that if we have a federal election and there's no climate policy from the next government or an undoing of the EV standards and regulations, if we don't pass those fuel standards and keep to those fuel standards, if anything falters in the United States, we get a Donald Trump presidency again, and it falters, which he did undo during his term, those sales will start to flatline. So it comes back to the issue of we've invested all this stuff, that's great. The ecosystem has to be more robust than the policies that are mandating household purchases right now.